My name is Kate Stallings, owner of Kate Creative Media. We are a web marketing company. Uh, we started in outside of Boston. We are in Canton, Massachusetts. Our newest location is in Boca Raton, Florida. We help companies all across the United States, mainly in the kitchen and bath and trades associations and uh, in, in, in those industries to um, you know reach more people online, build a better website, kind of demystify the process of how the websites should be set up and what's included in marketing. So I'm gonna go through um, some very key points today and hopefully you guys can take some notes, uh, come away with some things that you guys can be doing as soon as you get off the meeting today and maybe bring back to your web team to uh, get started and get that much notoriety out there as soon as possible. So we're gonna be talking about a few things today, discovering how to optimize your website's content to the fullest potential, exploring how to increase your traffic on social media and your website to increase your local reputation. And then at the end, we're gonna examine how to create targeted content to use uh, for digital ads and how to promote your website. And all of the content that I use throughout this, throughout this um, presentation today is our clients that we've used. And um, so feel free to take a look at those after the website uh, presentation has been completed. So first things first, uh, many people don't actually review their website as often as they should. So if we're going to look at optimization, um, that kind of is a kind of an interesting word. So what does it mean to be optimized on your website? Well, first off, there's kind of two parties that are involved here. You've got your potential customer, and then you've got also Google and other search engines that are going to kind of be ranking you and making sure that you are who you say you are online and making sure that uh, when they come to your website, it's easily accessible, people feel comfortable with your website, and they can and then reach out to you. We call that the customer journey. To get there, you got to make sure that your website is optimized to its pretty much fullest potential. There's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of companies that are coming into the market in any industry that is starting to optimize their website as well. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at your website. If it's been a while, you definitely want to make sure that you're looking at it on your mobile phone. That's prob probably the most um, popular way that people are viewing your content online. It's on the go. People are at doctor's offices. They're at dentist offices or anywhere where they're just taking up time and they're looking on their phone for the best landscaper, the best designer, the best uh, you know kitchen and bath installation company. They're looking for the best of the best all the time. And so this is where you can come up ahead or your competitors can kind of come up ahead. So after this, I challenge everyone to look at your website. Is the links throughout the website working properly? Do you have any errors on your website? Is anything loading slow? Is anything not uh, you know, the way that you would hope it would be? And maybe if you're working with a web company, maybe this is something that you had asked them a couple of times to take a look at and see if this is something that could be fixed. These are all things that when you put your best foot forward online, you want to make sure that you are looking good in every single platform throughout the internet. This is what I call your 24-7 salesperson. It's going to be working for you all the time. You don't pay as much as your salesperson is, but you're still paying for something to work 24-7 for you. So why not make it work for you? So we want to definitely make sure that your website's performance now is optimized to the best of its ability. So we're going to look for loading speed on the site. This is something that Google is ranking sites tremendously for. So if you go to your site, and it's taking a little bit, say more than three to four seconds to load, that is something to automatically start talking to your team about and optimize the website. Because if people are going to your website or trying to get to your website and it's taking a couple seconds, we're, they're probably going to move on at this point. So it's important to make sure that every piece of content that's on your website is optimized and is streamlined. So whether it's video, photos, links in your website, anything like that, you definitely want to make sure that it's lightweight and that it's working properly for you. That way, when someone does come to your website, which is a wonderful thing, whether it's organic or whether it's a search ad, that they come there and that they can stay there and they can interact with the website. Because if they don't, what's going to happen is, is that Google is going to recognize that as a bounce rate. And what a bounce rate means is someone comes to your website, they interact with the website, but they don't go more than the first page of the website, and then they, they bounce onto another website. Most times, they're probably going to your competitors. So if your website's not loading properly, if your content's not where it should be, and if your messaging is off, 
that is where people are probably going to go onto your competitor's site and that might actually convert to them, especially if they're running Google ads. If they're running ads, those cookies, I think we're all familiar with cookies on, on websites, will then track them to other parts of the internet of Facebook ads, social media ads, and banner ads that will then bring them back over to their website and convert. Lastly, is we want to make sure that the structure of your website is working properly and in your favor. So what does that mean? That is, for every website, you have lines and lines and lines of code in your website. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, you would actually have to hire a developer to code out an entire website, which was a lot of work. Thankfully, that was a little bit before my time. So I got into the industry where there was a lot of robust technology. Even with a lot of robust technology, you still have to make sure your website is set up properly. So the code within the website, all those lines of code are clean code. So this is something that your web company would know a lot about is making sure that when you, especially if you do this a DIY style, do it yourself style, is making sure that the content on your website is optimized and making sure that the code within your website is optimized. Um, this is something that is super important. And this is something that Google, the powerhouse of Google definitely wants to see. So when you go live, they want to make sure they can understand your website. They want to make sure they can read the website. And that by the time that they read the website, understand what you're trying to rank for, understand where you are and who you're trying to hit geographically, then they can match the right people to hit your website when those right search queries are presented to them. So we're going to go through quite a little bit next on um, some deeper messaging and some deeper highlights here. And we're going to look at, I'm going to just bring it down here, optimizing now to the fullest. So once you've kind of had that first section of you making sure the website's loading fast. Okay, we got that. Now we make sure that the messaging is on, is on brand. Okay, we have that. Now we make sure that Google's happy with the website. That's great. Next thing is we do this with every single client, whether they are someone we're going to design a website for or someone we're going to do marketing for, which is keyword research. Many people are probably familiar when they look at, you know, uh, best sushi place near me. I love sushi, so we'll just go with that. Best sushi place near me. You want to make sure that if you're a sushi restaurant, you want to make sure you're found for that. These are one that that's, would be one keyword that someone would want to be found for if we were working with a sushi restaurant. Now, turn that over and think about that for your own business. Is it best kitchen installer in you know Phoenix, Arizona? Best um, designer, interior designer in Miami Beach uh, or Miami, Florida? You know, think about where you want to be. And that's something that you should be working with your team. Again, whether it's internal or you or you work with a, another company to make sure that you write down what those 10 to 20 keywords are. Some companies come to us and they have a whole long list of about 100 keywords they want to be found for. And that is all well and great, but it's going to be such a long list that to rank highly for all of those is kind of a losing strategy. And the reason is, is because there's no way, unless you're someone like Macy's or Amazon or a big, big company, it's really hard to go for all of those. So if you do start with 10, start with 10 good keywords that if someone were to find you today with that keyword, it would probably turn into a lead for you and, and would probably turn into someone who would find you through that uh, Google search. Once you kind of get to about 10 or 20 and you've been around for you know a couple of years and you rank really highly for those, then you add in a little bit more. Then you add in a little bit more and then add in a little bit more. And the strategy might change for those because as you're going for your keywords, other people are too. So it kind of makes the game a little bit fun, in my opinion. So now you have other designers, other kitchen and bath installation companies, other trades professionals, and other maybe associations that are going for the same keywords in the same geographic location. So I'm going to show you in the next slide about how to start to optimize for that with you. The next thing you want to look at is the headlines on your website. So we want to make sure that when people come to your website, many people, there's a whole new group of home buyers out there that are going to be looking for kitchen and bath and, and designers and home related products that have a very limited um, kind of uh, attention span. And so we want to make sure we hit those people with the right information right off the bat. So we want to make sure, for example, for this Compass Plumbing website that we did a couple of years ago is 24-7 reliable emergency residential and commercial plumbing services. 
that pretty much sums it all up. The next section below that is call to actions. We realized in the plumbing industry is that many people don't really want to learn about the about us section, why we're so unique and, and you know and, and superior in the plumbing industry. Maybe not until they get to know us a little bit more, or maybe until they've um, you know looked at another service with us. But most of the time, they want the service done and they want it done fast. So with these kind of companies, if this pertains to you, is that making sure that the right keyword that brings you to the website and then brings you to the right headline and then brings you to the right call to action is a great customer journey for every single company. So I know a lot of business owners, I'm one of them that loves to say, oh, well, this is why we're so amazing. This is why we're so great. You know, if I could just sit in front of 20 people, you know, I think we could convert them all over a conversation. But the truth is we don't really have that opportunity. And that's really what your website's supposed to be. So it's really hard to get every single person that comes over that might have been a potential person in, in, in person at an event to convert, but you'll get a lot more people if it's optimized for the uses of Google search and also for the uses of that potential person. So if you're not working with a marketing company, maybe talking to one of your other friends or family members that says, hey, you know, can you take a look at our website and just let us know if this is you know, just give us an honest opinion. Is this something that is working for us? Does this make sense? They may find because they've never been to the website that it actually loads pretty slowly, that the content on the site is is not really personable and that they find that it maybe ranks maybe about a, you know, C minus really on, on their scale. If you can find someone that's pretty honest about that, that's great information. And then you can start to optimize that for, for, for your website. So having clear calls to actions throughout your website is going to be a key, um, you know, win for it for everyone. So that could also be click to call, click to email. And those are things that we can just have people call you pretty much all day. And we do that when we do a lot of ads with people is optimizing that site. So really to break away from this is Google is looking to bring people to your website with the, with the best search query possible. So they want to match that. Their goal is that they don't want you to ever go to page two or three, ever. And I, I don't know about you, but I haven't been there in a long time. So they want to make sure that you're in that kind of first five pack, we call it, that when you search for something, you are in. You don't even have to scroll down. You're pretty much in that, that kind of local search pack there that people just go to you and then they come right over to your website and hopefully convert that way. So if you can make that journey a little bit more condensed for them and they can find that content on the website much quicker and more convenient for them, that is what Google wants to see. They'll take that and say, XYZ design company took someone, they converted on their website, which they can tell, and then that person stayed on the website. Even more points if that person goes back to the website. So with everything out there, Google is looking at a lot of different data points as, as we do as well. So these are all wonderful things to optimize your site with. The next thing, and I'm going to show you an example of this, is your content quality. So say you've already done the keyword research, your website's loading fast, messaging is on point, call to actions are on point. Now the content quality. Now someone's kind of gone through and said, okay, this person is checking all the boxes for me. I love it. They were recommended to me on Facebook. Their website loads. Boom. Now what's the content quality like? This is where you're going to want images of your portfolio, is you're going to want gallery images. Maybe you want to embed your LinkedIn or your uh, Instagram page or your Facebook page in there. You're going to be able to add a lot more content that is more maybe inspirational and fun that you can add into the website. So this next page that I'm going to show you is kind of how to optimize, how I personally optimize a website for full SEO uh, compatibility as well as something that Google wants to see and something that has actually converted really well for, uh, for my clients, as well as the clients that I've brought on. And we've pretty much done this exact same uh, SEO keyword, uh, I'll call that uh, kind of algorithm you know, puzzle that, we, that we've kind of figured out. And this next page is gonna show you exactly how to do that. Um, and if anyone would like a copy of this, I am more than happy to uh, show everyone this as well at any time. So <clears throat> this is video page content set up with SEO. Looks pretty self-explanatory. So during 2020, when the whole world got on podcasting, uh, I did too. And so I started to figure out that there is actually a method to the madness. 
and that Google is actually prioritizing content that is using video or uh, podcasting. So they started to come out with more and more um, you know, evidence that they were ranking content higher, that had more content, uh, that was newer content and podcasting in there. Uh, it was just shown time and time again. So I said, well, that's definitely, I have to try this before I do it with any other client. So I did. And I actually created a separate page, separate website. It's called Boston Web Pros. And so I started to put out a lot of content. I mean, it was like, oh my goodness, probably a couple podcasts a week, which I was doing all the manual labor on that. And if you've done your own podcast, it can definitely take some time. So I started to get into the podcasting sphere and I brought on some guests and I brought on some people who were um, starting to get some notoriety all across the country in every industry from real estate to investment banking, to cybersecurity, to crypto, to, to everything. Um, and just having conversations with people, which was always really, really fun. So I would take that content and then I would put it on this website and just for the functionality of doing the pretty much straight line method of, of SEO. And this is really what worked with myself and worked, worked with Google. So as you go, it's kind of a sandwich style. So the SEO is going to set up where you're going to have to have pretty much a captivating title. This is true with everything. So newview.media is the company that I brought on. He's a pretty big uh, crowdfunding, so, uh, crowdsource funding um, gentleman who does a lot of video and has raised millions and millions of dollars for companies in the Boston area and really across the country. And he just does amazing work. So I was curious about how he was doing this. So we did a video together. So I put the caption as newview.media using video to boost crowdsource funding. And then I put video. Then I scroll down and I put in a thumbnail with alt text. So I use the same image uh, kind of pattern over and over and over again. So that same gradient background, uh, that same photo of me, same typography, kept it really consistent. Put a thumbnail on there, which is that photo right there, with alt text. All text is just the text that say if your website didn't load properly for any reason, it was really slow, you're in a bad, you know, bad area with really bad cell service. If that image didn't load, there has to be a kind of text or description that relates to that that, that relates to that image behind the scenes. So you might see if you scroll over an image, it might say um, Kate and Tom, uh, you know, headshots talking about, uh, you know, podcast content. Or, you know, if it's something on another Google image of, you know, a uh, boy with mother, you know, walking through park. That's alt text, which helps Google understand what your what is in the image, just in case it can't load. And it's very helpful for keyword search as well, oddly enough. So if you don't have any alt text there, Google just kind of looks at it and says, okay, it's, it's an image, <laughs> but it's not really reading anything from it. So in a world where standing out is key, you definitely want to make sure that you add that in there. And if you're using any platform today, like Word, WordPress or Shopify or anything, it's super easy to add that in there. So uh, why not do that if it's super easy and helps? Of course, I always say you should do with that. The next is a brief write-up with outbound links. So uh, Tom had given me a little bit of, of a brief write-up as to everything he does um, and all the wonderful things he does for, for funding. Um, and then you can see these links here. You can see these blue links that kind of are popping out here. So these are all called outbound links that go to other websites. So that gives Google and it signals Google that we're outbounding to another website that relates to the keyword that has been highlighted. So newview.media is going right to his website. Kate Creative Media, down below a little bit, that goes straight to my website. And then right below, right in the middle is he was best business video marketing agency in the greater Boston. That link goes to a pretty credible source um, to another outbound link. So the more that you link to other websites, and even better, if they can link back to you, that shows authority that that says, okay, well, that person is linking to you. That person must also know you because they're linking back to you. And it's called a backlink strategy. Uh, people used to abuse this quite a bit back in the day. So Google's gotten a little bit smart on, on what you can and cannot do. But if you can link back to other people and you see this 
all the time in news articles, um, which is why they want you to you know, click on all those links throughout the site and, and kind of leads you to a little maze throughout the site of, of where they kind of want you to click next. But for this purpose, it's very easy to go on a local search function to have an outbound link uh, search function. The funny thing about this was is that I didn't know what I'd, what I'd get from SEO. I totally was just, let me just do an experimental trial. And what happened was my search for when I would type in this other gentleman, Tom, Tom Dodge's company, my company all started, started to rank almost higher than his. Secondly, what happened is that my search for images came up drastically. So people started finding me through Google search images. So you have on your tab, if you were to type in anything, you have, you type in sushi, you get search searching of sushi, then you get videos of, search, of sushi, then you get images of sushi, then you can get maps of sushi places. So in all those little packs of SEO, I was able to start kind of checking all the boxes. And quite frankly, I, I didn't even know what was going to happen. So we were able to check off a lot. And with that, people were able to find us through that content of putting out that knowledge-based content for a lot of people. Um, going down the list here a little bit. So um, I was able to use uh, for this brief conversation readout. This was actually before AI. Now you can use AI for everything, but I uh, I had done a brief conversation readout and where that video is right there kind of cuts it all off. But um, what I did was I just did a brief conversation readout of what I say, then what Tom says, then what I say, then what Tom says. First off, that gives more context to Google. Two, that helps the viewer a little bit read what I'm about to say before they even click on the video. Is it something even of value to them? It sounds interesting, but could I just quickly read what, what they're going for and then maybe take that content and maybe go to another blog post that Kate had put out. So people really had enjoyed that. And then below, the last thing was the video content there. That really helped having the content of the video all the way at the bottom because it helped people come all the way down and flow easily throughout the landing page of the site. And you can do this with any page you have for content on your current website. A lot of companies come to us and they say, we have blogs on our website, but are, are they helpful? Are they using any, like, do people use them? Um, and the answer is usually yes. Well, it's, it's yes and no. Most people are not reading blogs anymore unless you are personally putting them out. If you're hiring a copywriter, you have a keyword strategy, you have a messaging, chances are they're, they're probably being read. But how often and how thorough is kind of the next question. So this is a system that I would recommend sharing with your, with your company about how to set this up to really watch those analytics skyrocket for you. Having a certain title, a thumbnail with uh, alt text to it, a brief write-up without some outbound links. It doesn't have to be too crazy with all these links that go to Facebook and Instagram and all these other places. Google really wants to see authentic quality links. If you do it too much, it's going to look spammy and Google's not going to like that. And it might actually start to uh, negatively affect uh, the, the keyword function that we're going for. And then you want to embed the video. It's no secret that YouTube is owned by Google. And the more you use Google's products, the more that they're going to be rewarding you for that behavior. So anytime that you can use Google's products, you're going to, you're going to benefit. It might be a small bump in the area that you're looking to go in, it, even, if it, even if it's a small bump, it's definitely something to consider. So this is a really helpful page that I've now been able to take this content, bring it on over to a lot of our clients in the trades industry, especially the ones that are doing drone videos, are doing interview videos, are doing podcasting videos, or a lot of, a lot of our trades clients are actually getting on as free guests in other podcasts. And they just don't know what to do with the content. They'll say, hey, I just jumped on a podcast for a company in Michigan that we just did like a, you know, a roof for, and they're super happy with everything. I, you know, I don't know what to do with that content. And this is a perfect example of a very simplistic, easy way for people to use this content for you. This is such an easy way to allow people to make sure that they can understand who, uh, who you are add credibility to you and make sure that you can share this for social media purposes as well and just drive traffic right back to your website, which is really what we're always looking to do. So I know for those people in the audience that say, well, 
what if I don't have a blog? Should I use AI to generate blog content to optimize my website? And there's the jury's still out on that, but I'll tell you what we do know, which is Google uses a certain template for how it evaluates the content on your website. And it's called EEAT, kind of easy to remember. So this is coming right from the VP of Google, which is EEAT, you can call it EAT if you'd like, is a template for how we rate an individual site. We do it in every single query and every single result. So this is something they use day in and day out, and it's EEAT, authoritativeness, ex expertise, experience, and trust. And this is something that every day that they're looking at saying, how can you be a more trustworthy, professional website company that is making sure that we're driving the right people to the website? So how can you make sure that you have good eat, right? I'll just read these off. These were something right from Google, just, just so you know exactly what they're looking for. And I might give you a few examples of each. So one, make it easy uh, to verify the accuracy of your, the information on your website. So a lot of companies come to us and say, we just moved, we have a new PO box, we have a new address, the sweet number on our website's incorrect, small things like that. Well, when Google is verifying you online, especially if you're not paying ads to them, they kind of want to make sure you have a little bit of a pulse. They want to make sure that you are still online. You're still trying to get business. So if you're going from, if they're looking at other online directories, such as Manta or Angie's List or Thumbtack or Facebook, and that information isn't correct and it isn't fluid through every single online directory and everywhere else online, it might start to take that trust factor away. And it's something small and you might say, oh, we just haven't gotten around to it. Well, it's something that Google's very smart. And Google will take that and say, well, you know, maybe they're just not keeping up with their content. They're not keeping up with their content. You know, is your expertise, is, are they trustworthy? You know, they start to question those things as maybe a regular person would as well. You know, COVID had changed a lot in 2020. And so it changed the, the digital sphere forever, which was saying is that if you do not have a website, if you do not have a Facebook, if you do not have social media, if you don't have a Google My Business, people automatically think that you didn't survive or didn't make it, or you just don't exist. We see it all the time as people come to us and they just want a stamp of authenticity and that's their website. But once you get the website is how do you continue to keep that content managed properly and is it going to be a huge undertaking? And the answer is usually no, as long as you keep things up properly. But there's a lot of AI now that you can use to keep that running properly with you. And the next one is showing that there's a real organization behind your site. So people can use AI photos now to, to create kind of team photos. Um, you know, you can play around with AI. I always say play around with everything to see what you like. But the main thing is that at the end of the day is if you have a drone photographer, a videographer, someone you, you know, like, and trust that can do headshots for you, you know, uh, office photos for you, portfolio pictures for you, that's really going to go a long way because the photos that you take that are stock photos that some people come to us and just say, oh, just use that. And they kind of just, you know, don't really mind that we're going to potentially use some stock photos per their request. You have to think of every single millions of companies that have used that exact same headshot, that exact same fake photo of whether it's a kitchen or a car or a person out in the job. You know, it's the same thing and it really doesn't speak to you. So if Google is a real, and it can just be a simple headshot, a simple drone video, which will help out with SEO too, because it's unique content, that will definitely go a long way. Three is highlighting the expertise of your organization in the content and services you provide. This could be PR articles. Um, you could have content that is, you guys just went to a ribbon cutting. You went to, you know, you did a presentation for the National Kitchen and Bath Association. It could be something where you are, um, you know, you, you are a donor, a special donor for an organization. Anything that's showing that you are, uh, you know, serving your community, anything that shows that you are high expertise in your organization, you've been around for a long time. Some people come to us and say they've worked for um, the Patriots before. They've worked for uh, Tom Brady. They, they've done stump grinding for Tom Brady's house, and that might be something they can put on the website. So there's a lot of things you can think of 
and I'm sure some things are probably coming to mind that, you know, certain cool projects that you was, it was a big project for you, whether it was a stadium or it was um, someone of notoriety that you want to add to your website. These are all wonderful things that Google wants to see, as well as your community, local um, kind of, you know, uh, existence and, and how you work with, with the local community as well. Um, show that you show that honest and trustworthy people stand behind your site. That's pretty self-explanatory. Make it easy to contact you. Please make sure that your phone number and your email are correct. Many people say that, oh man, my phone number was off by one digit. That one digit could go to someone who didn't speak English, one person that didn't speak, that wasn't from this country, one person. And that's what someone would call and think that they were getting to you when really it wasn't to you. Or I've gotten people that call someone else and it's a, it's a healthcare company, you know? It's so you wanna make sure that it's definitely easy to contact you that and that information is correct. Design your site so it looks professional or appropriate to your purpose. That's very self-explanatory, but very important. Update your content site often, at least show that it's been reviewed lately. I recommend about at least once a quarter. That's kind of the, the that's, I'd say that that's the least often if you want to do it that way. Um, I recommend at least the beginning of the year, go through the content on your website if you haven't already. Um, a lot of people find errors, which leads me to number eight, which is avoid errors of all type. I've gone to plenty of meetings where people have literally, the older generation has literally printed out my entire website and nothing was wrong with it. They just printed it out and read everything and they stapled it together and they wanted to read every little thing that I had on my website. And they would call to each thing on my website and say, oh, you talked about this service right here. Can you tell me more about that? We found that really interesting. Or wow, you guys really, you guys do training services. I didn't read that anywhere with any other company that we um, that we researched. Can you tell me more about that? So the different generations that will be reviewing your website have different methods of consuming content. So the younger generation might just zoom through and maybe just jump over to TikTok and look for content that way. Um, and then some people might just, very exaggerated example, literally comb through your entire content on your website, not looking to find something bad, but just looking to see, to get to know you as uh, and, and make sure that you have EEAT, which is really, really, really important. And I don't, I, I don't blame them for wanting to do that. So be mindful that there might be people who do do that. So should you use chat GPT? If you don't have all this, it sounds like a lot. Kate, you're talking a lot about a lot of things that sound great. We know we need to do it, but there's got to be a, you know, an, an easier way, right? So there is, and many people do use chat GPT. Um, so there's kind of three viewpoints on it right now. Many people are familiar with chat GPT. If you're not, basically it is something that you can go to just chat GPT, type it into Google and you can type in anything in your wildest dreams, pretty much of, you know, writing proposals, writing detailed emails that you don't know how to respond to, um, writing up a lawsuit, writing up, um, you know, pretty much getting a lot of information through an AI bot that's writing back to you in instant time. And it's being uh, used in many different ways. The marketing industry has used it um, and they've uh, they've gone pretty far with it and it's very, very helpful. But in my personal opinion, it's not an end all be all solution. It's more of a resource, but there's been some discussion about SEO reasons uh, about if you use AI, will that negatively affect your SEO, your search engine optimization? Because Google doesn't own this. This is something that's actually a competitor to Google. Google come at, came out with uh, Bard, which is a competitor to ChatGPT. It's still in beta mode. It's uh, something that is coming out. They said more in the summer or fall, but knowing how quickly AI has adapted, probably even sooner. So we'll see how that comes in. But as a side note, there are all the companies that we know, the biggest companies in the world are in a race for AI technology. So they're definitely going to come out with something that is going to be able to, in my personal opinion, they're going to come out with something to detect this. And whether it's going to hurt you, we don't know yet. It's something that we that could help you. It may be. But I, I think once you've order, uh, opened up Pandora's box, it's really hard to put it back. And that can be used in a good way and also in bad way. So there's three viewpoints, which is when you use, say if you use um, ChatGPT to write a, a blog post for you about best DIY interior designer um, 
you know, things to know. And you have that right out of a very detailed blog and you pretty much copy, paste it right onto your website. Will that help SEO? Will that not help SEO? So there's three viewpoints right now. One is that on from Google is that if it can be detected, it will have a negative impact. Viewpoint number two is that it can it, it can't be detected and there be, will no have there'll be uh, no um, impact from that. And viewpoint three is that it can be detected, but it won't affect anything as long as you have helpful content, which is kind of um, a viewpoint that I'm kind of leaning towards, because as long as it is helpful content, that's really what Google wants to see, isn't it, from the EEAT kind of template. So it's really hard at this point to know where AI is going to go. So but at the end of the day is Google wants to make sure that it's presenting the best search results. And we live in a time right now that it's very scary that someone who is 18 or 19 years old can write up something using AI and sound like they're, they're someone who's been around in the industry for, for 50 years. That's a very interesting time that no one has ever seen before. I'm sure most people in this, in this webinar would be probably going to the library and reading and doing it the old fashioned way. Now you can pull up anything in a matter of seconds. So is Google going to understand that? I'm sure they already have. And are they going to want to uh, find a way to use kind of predictability wording and figure out how you are using ChatGPT to get out more content that might be a little more spammy or it might be good content? So it's hard to see where it's going right now. I think since it is a competitor, this is just my personal opinion, I think that they will kind of adapt to something on the BARD situation that is going to be much more um, robust. Um, chat GPT still has some limitations. You can ask it some things. You can have it plan your entire travel um, itinerary. You can tell me, plan a whole trip to Italy and it will do the whole thing for you, tell you exactly where to go. It's amazing. But Google really wants the best search for this. So, but how will it understand that? We don't know. We don't know yet at this point. So with that said, just so I don't hurt myself, but I also can get a lot of content out, I kind of balance it in this way, which is I use it mainly for scripting, for video scripting, for content purposes, um, social media, you can use it, but I, I really don't. Um, I think it takes the personality out of your brand quite a bit. I think it deflates it a little bit. Um, I think if you're in a pinch, you can definitely use it and, and probably get away with it. But for video scripting of something where you want to come out with five topics on how to, you know, uh, get into the industry a little bit more or how to become knowledgeable in the industry or how to showcase your, your knowledge in any way. Um, for example, if this had existed during the supply chain issue um, and we were working with a lot of um, uh, contractors who, uh, you know, couldn't get windows and doors for a long time. You know, this is something that they could easily, if they didn't want to put a whole video together, is have something like this, put together a video um, script for them to kind of take print out, maybe get 90% of what they want written there, and then add their own personable brand and flair to it. That's how I personally use it, because right now it still kind of writes almost like a robot. So you do have to add in a little bit of your flair to it. So again, it's not an end-all be-all solution. A lot of companies that you're probably working with are using it to some extent. There's no, nothing wrong with that, but it might be something that if you notice that your content is changing on your website, on your blogs, or on your social media, it might be something just to have a conversation with because there's a lot of other ways you could be utilizing it to help you on that search functionality. So the next part is how to increase your traffic on your website and boost your local uh, reputation. So if anyone else is investing for your retirement, like I am, it is not a one fit solution. So you're not just going to invest in bonds or real estate or ETFs or the stock market. You're going to invest in a multitude of things, right? That's what exactly what your financial advisor would say. That's exactly what every marketing company says as well. So I put 20% across the board here. It's really not. Some are more important than others, but just bear with me for this example. There's a wonderful tool called Google My Business. And actually, it's kind of still surprising, but yet not surprising, that almost 50% of local businesses still do not have a GMB listing. And this is something that is very, very powerful. It's free to use. It's probably the best place to gather online reviews 
put pictures online, and it's just a, just a very, very powerful tool. If you're not familiar with it, I'd highly recommend just searching Google My Business on Google. It'll pull right up for you. It's a very easy process to get authenticated into that account. And it's also free, as I mentioned. So why not use it? The importance of that is because Google has uh, kind of a authority over the other search, um, the other search engines. So people aren't using Bing. They're not using Yahoo as much. Um, there's still people who use them, but Google is going to be your main solution for people searching for you. There's other online directories that you can use, which are called uh, you know, Manta, Yelp. Um, you know, Foursquare, Angie's List, Thumbtack. These are all wonderful, uh, you know, online directories for you. And they're called online directories because think of it like when you used to go into a mall, if anyone still does that, is you'd go in and there'd be a big online, there'd be a big directory that you can go to for shopping and for food and for shoes and clothes. And you would be found in, say, Macy's would be here, Filene's would be here. And, you know, you, again, you would go through the on the the directory there same thing with your business the only thing that's different nowadays is that with all of the content and information out there whether you've put it out or someone else has put it out these online directories have gathered all this information about you and now they've put it out there for the public to to see that's not necessarily a bad thing but there's a lot of content that people come to us and they also say is well manta has my wrong phone number you know, Yelp doesn't, that, that, that's my wrong address. That's not where I'm in, or I've been trying to get these reviews off of this, um, off of this online directory for a long time. This is something we help a lot of companies with because it's something that is kind of not really used uh, in the industry as much. Online directories aren't really used as much. It's hard to utilize them to kind of the fullest extent, but what you can do is you can make sure that they're listed properly. It's called online directory cleanups. Um, and really what they are is it's a lot of, uh, you know, information online and data points that it's pulling from. And what Google is seeing is it wants to make sure that everything that is circulated on the Internet, Facebook, Manta, Yelp, Google, Bing, everything is streamlined and consistent across every single platform. So you want to make sure that if your name is called NAP, your name address, phone number is correct across all platforms, definitely. And if it's not, Google says, well, they're not paying ads with us. So are they, did they move? Did they go to a different location? If they moved from Boston to Miami, do they not want to service Boston anymore? You know, they're smart, but they're still thinking through how to best put you in search, right? So if you have that Google, my business search, that's going to be really, really prevalent for you. And it's going to work really, really well to start getting those leads up for you. The next is going to be social media. A lot of people used it. A lot of people still post once in a while. My personal uh, viewpoint on it and what we've seen with a lot of clients is organic posting has, it works, but you have to have a really a long-term strategy with it. It's something that got throttled quite a while ago. Um, so a lot of companies would say is, well, you know, I put out all this content and we have 500 people that follow us, but only one people, you know, one person likes it or two people like it, or maybe our top fans like it. So it really goes out to pretty much the only top 20% of people that are interacting with your page. So the same people like the same content on the on the page, it's because Facebook recognizes that every time it goes out and it's in front of them, they engage with it, which is good. But then you're like, well, then I'm not hitting anyone else. And then you see that magical button up at the top that says boost this post for $30. Many people try to do that and hey, it's, you know, 30 bucks. You know, maybe it's something that would be a cup of coffee with your best client, you know, just see what happens. Well, then you get kind of, it's like running the slots for the first time. It kind of gets addicting. And then you start to say, oh, you can reach more people and more people. My personal recommendation on that is definitely to set up an ad strategy at that point. If you're interested in running ads, you could do the 30 day, you can run, run a 30, um, the $30, uh, you know, boost uh, ad if you would like, but that is only boosting it just a tiny bit. So you can actually run a full ad campaign, which targets a crazy amount of detailed folks. And I'll show you that on the next slide here of crazy detailed focused audience. And you can really paint a really, really good picture. 
the boosting is just going to kind of go on a little bit of a launch pad do a nice jump up in the air and then maybe get you a couple people but it's very very rare that it actually converts into paying customers it helps you see what the dashboard looks like it helps you see what analytics looks like but it only gets you that little bit of kind of uh, a look into what else could be done so if you're running enough ads at some time you can start to do what's called a remarketing campaign that retargets those people that have already interacted with your ad and then bring them back to your website which is probably the best form of advertising you can do so you want to make sure with everything you're doing is that there's a purpose right so your website to go back to the first part your website's optimized first you have a website your website's mm -hmm. optimized it's loading properly the messaging's right at the content's correct your portfolio page is loading properly everything works the contact form works everything is good now you have your online directories everything is great and then you maybe can go over to your social media platforms and make sure that everything is working properly on there and then run some ads on on that platform the next is that you can do is use your email marketing campaign the biggest thing that people say is that i don't want to use email marketing because every time we put something out we don't uh we we get people that unsubscribe which there's an obvious answer for that is that it's not it's not uh interesting content to them it's not uh you know relatable content they could be a buyer but now is not the time that they're a buyer so this is where you can take the content from your podcasting from your ads from your social media from your online directories from your experience and from your portfolio and then bring it all into a nice strategy that goes out i would say no more than once a month um unless you're doing something like a promotion or something that is um you know something that you need to kind of prep for like a maybe a webinar but once a month put something out that shows you are getting ahead in the industry something that is a, maybe a case study that you could put out there um this is something that if you wanted to use chat gpt for you could definitely say hey what are the top what are top five topics that I could talk about in this industry name your industry that is happening for 2023 and it will read out to you what those are and you can start to create content around that so it helps speed up the process a little bit for taking the guessing game out of it but then still allowing you to have your personal brand and your you know your authentic self as well with it so if you do all of those and you and you pace yourself it's not going to be an overnight strategy but if you do all of those then that's something that is definitely going to put you way in another category and I can guarantee you that if you were to think of your five other competitors that you know right off the bat they're there at every trade show they're there on Google they're everywhere I can guarantee you that they're doing this that I'm describing right now this off to the right very very well whether they're doing it in-house or they have another company they're doing this very very well and they understand that it is a long-term strategy most people come into it and they think oh well I can do it for a month or two and it just doesn't work unfortunately because you're competing against so many different companies by the time that Google figures out what you're actually trying to rank for in the first about two or three weeks, um, you know, you'll start to see some kind of ad revenue coming back in. You'll start to see some leads coming back in. You'll start to see the content that you've put out really create an ROI for you. But every content, every company that I think that you that maybe is coming to mind, that the, oh man, these guys are everywhere. These guys have been around for 60 years. These guys are are new and they hit the ground running. It's because they've done this and they've done this really really well and they know that their brand and their messaging is getting them really really far so we're going to look at maybe some facebook ads which is going to be something that is going to probably be really exciting for a lot of people there's plenty of different ads you can run but once you set up everything that we just talked about do a facebook ad strategy and this is if you haven't seen what facebook ads looks like on the back end for a company like mine this is what it looks like on the left and you can do you can pick people from a certain location you can pick them through app through an age you can pick them through gender and the most fun thing after languages is you can pick them uh pick your ad strategy and the people you want to target through a detailed targeting strategy so through demographics interests behaviors so maybe for all the women that are joining on back in the day I used to you know do collages right at sleepovers right you would have a collage and you would cut out through the magazine of cologne and celebrities and destinations right and that's kind of a, a broad example right well think about what would your collage of your perfect client look like are they a football fan are they 
Um, you know, do they go out to nice, fancy restaurants? Are they, um, you know, are they NBA fans? Are they golfing fans? Are they boating fans? Think about all those people, you know, what is their lifestyle? You know, do they make a certain amount of money? Do they just get married? Do they like uh, Oprah? Do they like um, Joe Rogan? You know, you can target a lot of people uh, based off of what they like and what their interests are and their buying habits in this section number five, which is the most powerful. So if you take location, age, gender, and the language is obviously most in this case is going to be English, and you take that, what it will do is at the top, it will show your potential audience size. And this one is, is pretty broad because there's no one in here right now, but it would say 210 million people that you can target. As you start to define who you're trying to target, that will come down a little bit. Maybe a good strategy would be, you know, you could target, you know, half a million people, 200,000 people. And that ad strategy is best to probably go out. I recommend about a two to $3 a day strategy. Um, other companies might have different opinions of, of what they think is going to best work, but that is a low budget. So maybe about 60 bucks, 200 bucks a month, which is still a very low ad budget. You put it in a very niche defined uh, audience. You put that out there. Once you do that is the best part about this is if you're doing it right, is then you look at the data. You can come back and say, well, you know, if, if I haven't gotten any calls at this point, if I haven't gotten any contact forms through at this point, and it's been the 30 days, you can look back and say, okay, well, who did we target? How many people came over to the website? And then you can start to see maybe that wasn't the best target audience for us. Maybe we can look at a different audience. Maybe it's a different area. Maybe it's a different demographic that we that we should be targeting. Or maybe it was just too small of a sample and maybe we should look at doing it for 60 days out. So if you're running this with any other company, a, the good first like 30 to, to 45 days is going to be mainly for a data sample. And you're probably going to get some leads. You're going to get some people coming over. I mean, it, it, you can detail so um, narrowed down that it's, you really get a lot of great data from this either way. So as long as you keep up with this, and then you can do maybe a $5 a day strategy, you can do a $10 a day strategy. Similarly on Google ads, which is a whole nother webinar and Google ads, you pair that with a Facebook strategy that also goes on to Instagram, which this might be something that you guys have known or have tried in the past. The two of those together mixed with that, the search and the social campaigns are a really dynamite strategy because people, when you when they're recommended to you on Facebook and they say XYZ designer, the first thing they're going to do is go and search for you as we all would. They're going to go search for you. And it's kind of beneficial if you have an ad running at that time, because they're going to click on that ad, not have to worry about finding you come right over to your page and then convert that way. If they don't convert that way, then Google will make sure that they are uh, tracked in a very friendly way Track to make sure that if you go to any other page, such as abc.com, abcnews.com, or Fox News, or CNN, or MSNBC, is that this probably happened to everyone, is that you're looking at golf clubs on, uh, you know, on a website or on Amazon, and then you go to another page, you get off that page, look at some news, look at some local information, and then all of a sudden you see on the side either a banner or an image for something you just searched for. Well, that's where those display ads will follow you along the your, your kind of customer journey outside of the website. So this is why this is so important when everything is working really, really well for you and is working very, very tight in terms of your social, your website, your, your SEO, and everything else. No matter where someone goes online, they can be converted back over to you. And this all leads back to your website. So no, no matter if Google um, or no matter if Facebook went down tomorrow. I think Facebook went down, I think last year for a day and everyone lost their mind for a little bit. If Instagram went down for a day, if LinkedIn went down for a day is no matter what, you should always have your website. I like to think of all these other platforms, even, even Facebook, you're really renting from them. It should be the only place that think of it as, you're, as if you're going to a party, you're meeting people, you have awesome friends there and you want to get your friends over to your house afterwards, which is your website. That's really what it is. These what these these other places, you can you know paint the walls a little bit if you want. You can put a nice painting, or, but you can't knock down the walls. You can't redesign the kitchen. You have to live within the confinements of what they give you, which they could change at any time, and that's that's been okay for now. 
But what happens when you want to have people at your website and then convert them that way? That's what we're helping a lot of companies do. Robust that, uh, you know, converts very well and is professional and using all of these things that I'm just talking about here, which is a very broad brush against all of all types of media, we can make sure that you guys can be really at harnessing your website much, much better. But Facebook is a great place to start. Social media is a great place to start. Working with all these things are a great place to start. So, you know, towards towards the end here, I'm going to allow for some, some questions. I know I uh, definitely have gone through a lot here. You know, there's other ads that we can definitely look at. We can look at search ads, display ads, YouTube ads, shopping ads, all these things that are really quite amazing. And as long as the data is tracked properly, there's nothing you can't do. And as long as you're patient and then you have the right data and the right keywords and the right messaging, it's it's really just a wait strategy of how long until the until until these convert. Um, so we help clients all over the country um, work with all of these different kind of buckets of vehicles of lead generation and online.